I don't want to hear any argument about it. Oh. Right? Terminado for me. On you go, man. Aye, <laughs> go, and pre- go and save the game for his son. <laughs> Who the hell is that? <laughs> Just don't give him five years because then know. it becomes a big risk. Oh. Rotten. The guy's not got it. Wow. He's, he's not got it. Mike Navrotsky. January, we called him bitterly disappointing. Martin Melly. Um, Grade in this season. Which is all we've seen from him. Joined in the summer. Another summer signing. You've already touched on the fact that the original plan was to be him, Starfelt and Carter Vickers. But now we've got Mike Navrotsky here. Lost his place to Liam Scales and others have started ahead of him. So uh, he's another one from bitterly disappointing. I'm just inclined to watch him slide to bottom of the class. Aye, Terminado. I think that might seem a bit harsh, but is he better or... Is Stephen Welsh markably better or is he markably better than Stephen Welsh? No, just that's enough for me. I'd rather just have Stephen Welsh there. He's at least got the homegrown thing. It's Terminado mm. for me. There was opportunity when Carter Vickers got injured. There was opportunity for him there. And the fact that Liam Scales started all season and you couldn't dislodge him. So I'm wanting Celtic to, again, add quality. Am I going to be happy if Celtic go out and don't sign a centre-half this summer and stick with Carter Vickers, Scales, Navrotsky and Welsh? No, I'm not. If Celtic sign a centre-half, Navrotsky goes down a peg, so he could be fourth or fifth choice centre-half. So what's the point? It's no worked out, Terminado. Yeah, I can't disagree with any of that. It's it's unfortunate. It's yet another one that just hasn't worked out. But I suppose Terminado is one of those tiers in this that's probably unique in that the rest of them refer to performance over the season whereas Terminado refers to not only that but also what you can see happen in mm. the future because we're, we're actively calling to, for Celtic to get rid of these players by putting them in Terminado and a question I would ask myself and others about the the prospect of these guys going forward what's going to change and the, the only the only thing that's going to change is as Melly has just described players are going to come in and force him even further down the pecking order. Mm. So, nah, he's gone can, for can, me. Can I be... Can, uh, I, I'm going to just disagree ever so slightly on that one. I think, oddly, I think there's more to the Mike Navrotsky story than has already been written this season. I think, based on no inside knowledge whatsoever, but just what I've heard just out in the press and the, the comments Brendan Rodgers has made and just the look of the guy when I saw him, he didn't look calamitous apart from, like, one... Episode against me, Obsky, do you know what I mean? But who who has not yeah. had bad games against that guy, really, and other players in the league? But I, I just think the, the Navarotsky thing, to me, and we did pay a lot of money for him, I think, what was he, 4 million euros or something? That, to me, is more of a, we couldn't get him to fitness. He just maybe just couldn't get the guy up to speed. Yeah. And when you've got a guy who's nearly there, but in Brendan Rodgers' eyes, Liam Scales is there, you don't want to upset the apple cart too much. I think let's have a pre-season with Navrotsky. Let's everyone start again from pre-season onwards and see how he goes. I think if we don't sign a centre-half, I think we're probably more likely to see more of Navrotsky next season than we did this season. I, I've just got a wee feeling in my gut, but we're great in this season and he's not contributed in any meaningful way whatsoever. Nah. So that's bottom of the class term and I yep. Yeah. And it's like, see if we were to start next season with four centre-halves and they are Cameron Carter, Vickers, Liam Scales, Mike Navrotsky and Stephen Welsh, people would be absolutely seething about oh. that, including me. I think yeah. that would yeah. be absolutely unacceptable. So we need at least one centre-half. Now that we've extended the contract to Liam Scales, that means we're only going to get one probably. Yeah. And that, if someone has to pay for that, you have to keep probably Liam Scales around as much as possible because of the homegrown element that kind of holds us back in these things as well. So He's that, not even homegrown? Stephen Welsh? You said Liam Scales. No, oh, sorry, Liam Scales. Yeah, yeah. So if, yeah, we're going to have to keep Liam... Um, <laughs> <now that again. laughs> Stephen Welsh around for, for that reason. So really what you're dealing with is one place and that's to be filled by Mike Navrotsky. I would be very mm. disappointed. Again, it's, it's not an ideal world here. In an ideal world, I would want at least a bit two, maybe even three centre-halves brought into the <laughs> squad and to basically clear the decks of the ones who are who are currently there, apart from Cameron Carter-Vickers, maybe one other, but it's just, it's a reality we're in now with Navrotsky. I forgot two things. Right. I forgot a uh, slide whistle. So right. <laughs> right. for like Navrotsky going from bitterly disappointing to Terminator, I could go, 
Yeah. You'll, you'll that'll be about <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, and I also forgot about the existence of uh, Kobayashi, <laughs> <laughs> who's uh, who we listed as Terminado in January. And so did you. As you're rhyming off centre half, there, Stephen. Uh, uh, you didn't even bother to bring him up. Melly, you said something quite interesting. You said. Uh, last time you saw Kobayashi was when you went to watch Celtic train and they just had him play left back because yep. they didn't have any left backs and that's been his contribution to the season. I don't think we need to spend much time talking about it. A, no. An absolute failure of a signing. Bottom of the class, Terminado, Melly. Aye, what was it you said, Stephen, made one bench appearance this season? I was amazed to find <laughs> that out. I could have, if you'd asked me, um, I think there was a discussion in our Discord group about Kobayashi and I said, he's, I don't think he's made a single bench all season. Mm. For, for the entirety of a double winning season, he wasn't fancied even to sit on the bench once, but he did. He was on the bench at Ibrox when Lager, Bielka and Scales were paired at the back, so he was the backup to that. Imagine it could have been even worse for Celtic. So, uh, no, I mean, I, as I say, a complete failure of a sign. And it's probably one of those ones, like Lager, Bielka, like so many others we could name, like Thiago Holm, Odin Thiago Holm, he's probably a guy who appeared... Decent, probably showed up quite well in some metrics, yep. maybe passed the ball quite well, but as soon as he came into Scotland, the physicality just ended them. Yeah. And he's he's not he's not been worth even he's he's an Ange signing in that he brought him from Japan, a market he knew well. But even he brought him in and didn't play him. Yeah. And then he was playing a Wata at centre half last season, so it's or the previous season, so it's just it hasn't worked out at all. Terminado one. Terminado. Terminado. You mentioned him, Stephen. Mel Melly, you got oh, some just final thoughts. He's one of these signings that I think we might mention that I just had a flashback of you saying it's sort of low risk. Celtic bring him in from this league. If it doesn't work out, then you've no missed out much. That's the case. Just don't give him five years because then know. it becomes a big risk because you're stuck with this yeah. guy for five uh, years. Celtic sort of do this thing where they try and spread the payments over. That must be there must be a financial reason they give these yeah. much longer contracts than are really necessary. But even from I know it sounds dumb, right? But fans get sick of seeing players hanging about that are yeah, not playing. Yeah. Fans get so sick of it, and I don't know if there's any way that you can actually measure that. But I think. With things are going well, these king the things are forgotten sometimes. But as things start to go badly, fans go and we've got this guy and this guy here and he's no but and it and it just all together looks makes the squad look unfocused, cluttered, yep. messy. Yep. Looks 100%. like there's people that don't really know what they're doing behind the scenes. This sort of looks makes Celtic fans feel that the club are scrimping and scraping and bargain basement and all this and, and players like Kobe Ash are just sort of indicative of that I think so definitely Terminado on you go and don't do this five year contract thing anymore yeah. I never think we'll see the end of it uh, Tomoki Iwata oh. uh, you mentioned him Stephen he was bitterly disappointing in January review but towards the end of the season I think he's been a right good teammate yeah. I think he has contributed I think so too I think the context of the Bitterly disappointing thing in January probably would have been purely based on the fact that he just didn't play as much as you might have thought. It's the, it's kind of what a it's shaking something loose in the back of the old mind brain mm. there. When I was talking about Quan, when I said that ideally you want someone who can do a bit of that for McGregor, and you mentioned the Wata in that conversation as well. Iwata is capable of doing that. But prior to January, he wasn't really playing much at no. all. It was only really in the second part of the season. Everyone was crying out for him, do you remember? And mm -hmm. Brendan Rodgers said, ideally, I would have wanted to play him more, but he's not really been up to speed and Callum McGregor needs to play, etc., etc. So in the second part of the season, he definitely did a job. Was it a spectacular one? No. But was it effective at times? Mm, Probably, yeah. yes. Uh yeah, I think it's I think it's probably a right good teammate. Is he in the second tier of contributors to this season? Well, I just think about. so. So I think we're getting ourselves in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah, because uh, too focused on. Well, no, not so much that because January, right, and very much was a line in the sand because the majority of the squad, as we found out here, weren't performing before January. Yeah, yeah, and so after January is really. You know, you've got players who are terrible pre-January and okay post-January and you're kind of like, well, do you just forget the pre-January bit? Do you judge everyone's season mostly on the second half of the season? Because a lot of these guys just didn't do it. And if you look at the overall contribution from Awata, graded against everyone else's overall contribution, everyone else was crap pre-January, <laughs> yeah, more yeah, or less. I so you bundle everything up and I look at Awata and I go, he, he contributed in key games for his a... He came in when he was required. He's as far as the whole season's gone for everyone. I think he's a 
a second grade player for yeah. Celtic every day of the week. That's fair. Yeah, I think uh, what Stephen says, right? Uh, he was unfit the first part of the season. Uh, the first part of the season, I think we definitely would have seen more of him. And when I think of a, I don't think of a guy that's going to start every week. But I'm a happy when he does come in. If Cal McGregor can't make a game that he plays. I'm a happy when he comes on to offer Celtic a bit of solidity. Yeah, I'm, I think that's always going to be as ever be as that second grade of player. Mm. Would I like to see him upgraded at some point? Probably, but I'm happy with him now. So I in that second tier for me. I think I think that's where he, and that's where he is in the Celtic squad, doesn't he? He yeah. doesn't start every game, yeah, but he comes yeah. in. He mm-hmm. comes in second. So I think we're going to move him up from bitterly disappointing. And see, just a final oh. point on what you've just said there. There are so many players in this squad who can't do that. Yeah. Is there, yeah. Who, who are the, the sort of second tier of player behind maybe like a, a much preferred player in that position and they don't contribute yeah. anything in a water is at least capable of that. So he's, he's went from bitterly disappointing up, yeah, ooh, as Melly, <laughs> Melly silently mouthed towards me there, <laughs> uh, into a uh, right good teammate. Things are, things are looking up, things are getting positive. Oh, here we go. Uh, Greg Taylor, oh. bit, bitterly disappointing in January. Mm. Um, for me, Martin Melly, I think people are hung up on Greg Taylor. They still think he's the five foot seven, nine stone left back who gets bullied every week and isn't good at anything. But I think a lot of people forgetting that Ange sort of transformed him. We spoke at great length last season about how, and Stephen made the point about how Greg Taylor was really the heart of everything Celtic did well for a long period of last season. This season, still trying to figure out his position a wee bit in that first maybe quarter of the season, but then he started to invert a wee bit more. The manager changed things. Things started to click into gear. But for me, Greg Taylor also has went from that five foot, hmm, five <laughs> foot seven, nine stone left back who was quite quiet. He's like a senior member of the yeah. Celtic team yeah, now and he's yes. very vocal on the pitch and he seems to get what Celtic's about and get what the manager wants from people. So I think... What did we have him last year? We had him bitterly disappointing and I think Greg Taylor for me is just a right good teammate. Yeah, I think if you're taking the the sort of phrase right good teammate, that's exactly what he is. Mm. Uh, in this Celtic squad as well, I think he is that second tier of player where right now he's the only left back we got but he's a good left back and he's always going to be the guy that you look and go, we he can be improved upon. But as we've seen with Celtic, that is difficult. So when Greg Taylor plays... He usually plays well. He does need some competition, but happy to have him here. I think he is that sort of breaking into that sort of leader, not Cal McGregor leader, mm. but one of the main men in the dressing room. So always a good guy to have about and seems like he's a good player as well. I, I kind of want to ban, um, Melly's the one that said that Stephen, but I want to ban the general, the G-pop Celtic from saying, I, I'd like to see him improved upon because the reality of supporting Celtic is we are a team of the 11 guys that start every week. There's only one or two players that you can't realistically expect to improve upon. Yeah. Everyone else in that, you know, if you look at Celtic, you go, well, Matt O'Reilly, Calme, but there's a, well, maybe four players, but half the squad is always going to be made up of guys who occupy positions that were previously occupied in your lifetime by better players than yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You're right. never going to get a full start in a living of the best of each position you've ever seen in your life. So you can always go... Ah, I've seen better left backs than you. I've seen better right backs than you. The Greg Taylor position, the Greg Taylor position is a bit of an odd one for me, as I banged on about relentlessly, and it's not because I'm a Greg Taylor fanboy by any man. I mean, although I am, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's the contract situation is so bizarre. There's nothing on the table for Greg Taylor as far as it, it seems when we record this, but there's contracts for Liam Scales and there's contracts for Anthony Ralston, and I don't think anyone would argue with the fact that he's a better player than both of them. Well, I'm sure some people would argue yeah, yeah. with Liam Scales because that's that, that's the other side of that that kind of weird seesaw, isn't it? Where you're not allowed to praise Greg Taylor, but you're not allowed to criticise Liam Scales. Yes. But a lot of people criticise Liam Scales, and a lot of people. So it's a it's a weird kind of balancing act there. Whereas we get a lot of criticism for for always talking up Greg Taylor's contribution because I think I, I don't think it's unreasonable to do that because mm-hmm. he's a guy who's been here a long time, has played a part in. Now three straight titles, including a treble, and I know that's not coming into our, our thoughts today. But he's made a lot of appearances for Celtic, and he's the guy that gets thrown out there every single week in the same position. He's got no backup. It might be the case that Celtic could upgrade on him. I'm not going to disagree with that because you know, well, realistically, there are better players out there than all of Celtic's players yeah. in, in positions. Let, let me put this up, this to you, right? This thing about. Celtic could uh, upgrade on Greg Taylor, right? And I, I don't disagree that Celtic could upgrade on Greg Taylor. They could up- upgrade on many positions. Yeah. But Celtic have tried yeah, yeah, multiple yeah. times to upgrade on Greg Taylor. So 
I, I, and maybe I've got it wrong, but it's no Greg Taylor's fault. He's like, no, no. You, you spent four million pound on Bongoli. You spent four and a half million pound on Bernabe. No, can he start again ahead of me? There's probably been others that I've completely forgotten about. Well, even when nothing happened, so in that January, there was talk about several left backs being looked at late on into the window, and Brendan Rodgers tore it up and said, "No, I don't want any of them because they're <laughs> not better than Greg Taylor." Yeah. So, so again, I'm not. I don't want to make this like some sort of staunch defence of Greg Taylor but I do think he deserves more credit than he probably gets and again I'm not fighting back against the idea that Celtic could probably get a better player in the position but it's difficult it's, it's going to be difficult to, re to replace that it's going is to it difficult or is it difficult for Celtic well, pro I, well probably is it the same is it the same thing you yeah. know Greg Taylor said to us in one of the post-match interviews the story of my Celtic career is there's always been a left back needed or there's always one coming in and I think that's him saying but I've, I've Somehow, magically, I've managed to be Celtic's first choice left back through three managers. Uh, Le 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 them, yeah. Ne Neil Lennon, Ange Postacoglu, and now Brendan Rodgers. And we might sign a left back. You know, Brendan Rodgers was looking for one. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But Greg Taylor's contribution this season has been, on the whole, second tier. He's, um, and I think it's he's a key player for the Celtic squad and is and has been for since Ange came in basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fine and with that. And uh, with the sort of departures of Joe Hart and potentially Matt O'Reilly, probably moves Greg Taylor up that tier of teammates that you sort of turn to, doesn't yeah, yeah. it? Alongside McGregor, Forrest, Carter Vickers. So I great guy to have around. The thing with the bringing another left backs and upgrading on him or whatever, but Maybe it is difficult to bring in players. It's not difficult to find a guy who's nearly as good as him or can at least provide competition for him. Come on, Celtic. It's not even that. I think a lot of the things that Greg Taylor's game suffered, this is the last word on it, is he's, he's been without Dyson up top. And it's it's not just a case of like, oh, well, if he's not good enough to play, if he's only good when Dyson's up for it, it's not really that. But, you know, Dyson does a tremendous job for all the defenders. So he's playing with and without Dyson and other players drop in there and their, their contributions are greater or less than... He was playing with Starfelt behind him last year and yeah, he was playing right. with Liam Scales behind him last year. My neck would be on a swivel if I had Liam Scales <laughs> behind me, absolutely paranoid every time the ball went over my head. Wait, you're not comfortable with Palmer or Yang in front of you, Liam Scales yeah. to the right of you. Oh. Greg Taylor's standing Tate there. giving the ball away just in front <laughs> of you as well. So Greg Taylor's standing there one year, looks ahead of him, he's got dies in my head, a closing down machine. He looks behind him, he's got six foot of Carol Starfelt screaming pace behind him, a locomotive there. <laughs> He looks to his right and he's got Pete Katati who never gives the ball away. Fast forward this season and he's like, what the shit has happened here? <laughs> I've got Kuhn or Palma, I've got Liam Scales and I've got... Tumble at points. I've got Tumble. <laughs> he's like, what has happened? And then everyone was like, you're fucking, you're crap, Taylor. <laughs> he's like, come on, do me a solid so right. That's, that's where I'm and Greg Taylor. Yep. Right, right good teammate. Yep, absolutely. Every day of the week. Tony Ralston, Melly. Um, we've got it here. Yep, oh I can bring it out. Another airing for that. One second, look at this. Ah, I mean, that is impressive. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? No, I, wow. yeah, it's, it's a very unfortunate squad number he's got there. Yeah. I know, I know. Well, I, we're all going for it. <laughs> Might not be for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tony Ralston, last last year of January, rather, had a bitterly disappointing season. Um, I think no movement from me there, Melly. Eh... Uh, this one's difficult me for because I've got my you've got Greg Taylor I've got Tony Ralston but I'll always argue that again using the words Tony Ralston is a right good teammate and I can't remember games where he came in January onwards where he let Celtic down uh, I I think I mentioned this in a podcast recently mm -hmm. that when Brendan Rodgers was doing that talk at the coaching convention he talked about players and how when they're not playing they can become difficult or that he can, they can come to him and he can tell them exactly why they're not playing. He said he couldn't do that with Tony Ralston because he gives me everything. He gets, he encourages his teammates. He's that type of guy on the training field that leaves it all out there, but he's just not better than the guy ahead of him. So if we have guys around that can push the guy ahead of him to be better and be good for the teammates around him, I could argue it. It's too harsh to put him in bitterly disappointment because when he does come in, he contributes mm. and he has his he has his strengths. I think he's a good defender, but also going forward, like that ball over for uh, Palmer, he's done that a lot for Celtic in that last game of the season where I can always think of Giacomacus where he would put in great balls for Giacomacus. So I would argue, right good teammate, a 
Alistair Johnson's always going to play, but you need somebody under that can come in when necessary, like Ralston, like Awata. So I would put him in for his second half of the season as right good team. How many games did he play in the second half of the season? Not many, but that's what I'm saying about like it's not always the perfor- the amount of games. It's mm. when he does come in, he does a job for you. And I don't there's not many other positions where you can pluck a player out and the guy that comes in, you go, that's fine. So when you're grading the season and that second tier you're saying Anthony Ralston's contribution to the season has been equal to Iwata's. Yeah. Stephen, you buying this? Uh, I, on, as, as the description goes, as the synopsis of Anthony Ralston's ability and contribution to the season goes, or what he can produce goes, I can't disagree with a single word of it, but he only made about six appearances from, mm. from January onwards. That's and, why I put in that yeah. wee bit about what Brendan Rodgers said yeah. about him, because we don't see that yeah. side of it. In terms of his contribution to the title, I think I think it's far too little to to put him into the second tier of players. Although I do, I, again, I completely agree with everything you've said there about the value that guys we've made, we've all made that point recently after listening to Brendan Rodgers talk about it about how guys make it easy to be around at training. There's no there's no bad apples in yeah. there. There's no there's no guys making it. Or, or if they are, then they're mm. you know they're out they're out the door. Basically, the several players we've already mentioned were gone from January to March. Anthony Ralston's never one of those guys, so he, he does have value to have around. But in terms of actually playing in the second and part of the season and across the entire season, I don't think he's done enough of that to, to I, work. I, I, yeah. Look, I don't really have any particular beef with Anthony Ralston. I think, again, I think the comparisons to Taylor that a lot of people make, you made there, I think, I think they're a wee bit unfair to Greg Taylor. Because Greg Taylor yeah. is in every week, performing every week and, and contributing a lot more in terms of on the pitch. Now, I take what you say about the Bre- the point Brendan Rodgers made. I do also note that people like to kid on that Brendan Rodgers likes to talk a lot of rubbish sometimes, to put it politely, but <laughs> no. they pick and, pick and choose what he wants. So that sounds like a, a Brendanism or Anthony Ralph is absolutely brilliant, can't fault him, but I just don't play him. So I, I think overall... I don't think he's terminal. I don't think he's bottom of the class by any manner no, of no. means. But I think had Melly, let, okay, let me say this to you: had Anthony Ralston only played six games since January, right? But you didn't know about that stuff behind the scenes. Would you still say he was a right good teammate, or would you put in that third tier? Because for me, if I hadn't heard that stuff from behind the scenes, I'd be playing with well, the guys played a handful of games this season. Like, probably one start since January as well. One start since January, he's probably bought me the class here because that is low, low numbers in terms of how many players we've churned through. Even guys like Palma and Kuhn that will rate later on have played a lot more football than Anthony Ralston has. So he'd be bought me the class. You telling me that has moved them into third place. Mm, yeah. It's not moved them from third to second. It's moved them from fourth to third for me. I, I, I get it, but I just think it's one of the, the only positions where Alistair Johnson had a really good January onwards, didn't he? So mm. what more could Tony Ralston do other Have than... a better one. <laughs> can he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he, he, Alistair Johnson's always going to be a first choice. So I get it why you would put him third choice, but... For me, that it's, it's kind of like the, the Joe Hart and Greg Taylor things. The, fi- the things behind the scene mean that these guys push the guys on. But I completely understand why you S- put. So in the Stephen, third. two second place for him, third place for me. Where are you going? Ah, it's third, third tier for me. Bitterly disappointing. We go, okay. Again, that that is very harsh. It, it's not literally that. I feel uh, we've already explained that, but I feel yeah. very strongly about having to say that on the end of Tony Ralston because it is he's not been bitterly disappointed in no. any stretch of the stretch of the imagination. That's just the gimmick of the of the tier. And hey, if you don't get the gimmick by now, you might as well switch it off. Get <laughs> <laughs> oh, your brain dead, okay? <laughs> right. Sitting through over an hour of this so far yeah. talking about oh, what are they talking about? Bill? Every fourth about? player were like, listen, <laughs> it's we don't really mean listen, you get it by now or you don't get it. Cameron Carter Vickers was a right good teammate in oh. January. Stephen. <laughs> yeah, is it, wait, are we brandishing the official slide whistle for this yeah. one straight up to the top? I think, yeah, I think that's fair because you no, know, that's in January, right good teammate will have been applied because we couldn't put him in the very top tier because he'd barely played. Remember, he missed so much of the yes. first half of the season and continued to basically into the some of the second half of the season. Injury hit. I think there was some weird stat going around where we were getting towards the kind of business end TM of the season he'd only started about 12 or 15 Mm. games or something like that but in the second half of the season it shows you just exactly how valuable he is he's an absolute rock in there 
and could I see if we had to continue with Liam Scales and A another at the back, just sort of cobbling together what you could here and there with Stephen Welsh, maybe even Navrotsky, maybe even occasionally Lagerbjelka, would we have won the league in the yeah. cup? Can't see it. Yeah. I, I genuinely, I think he is that important. I think we are that weak without him that everything would have been in the balance, tipping towards outright disaster, really. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make too much of a case. Yeah, it's fairly obvious what I'm going to say, and it's astonishingly brilliant. He was out with a bad injury this year, wasn't he? Yeah. Was it yeah. this year, Ryan? They they had the technology, they could rebuild him. <laughs> the Celtic six million dollar man is absolutely undeniably top of the class for me. Celtic don't win the double without Cameron Carter Vickers. Yeah. It's that, that simple. It, look it is and for a guy if you were looking at it and going, Well, he's just said Tony Ralston didn't you pl really play that many games. Cameron Carter Vickers didn't really play that many games. Don't care. Yeah. Because when yeah. he does play, Celtic win. And I think I can only remember the Hearts game where you're going, but Carter Vickers, when he played in that disastrous game, yeah. didn't he? The the one at home. Uh, so I think I just a great player. And the one player in the whole team where Cal McGregor, oh, look, you can probably get away with a water for a while. Kyogo, you can get away with, but uh, Ida, Matt O'Reilly's out, Hattati's out, you could probably get away with Bernardo. Can he get away with Carter? Nah. Because you cannot do it. And this is why, again, with Celtic, you need to go out and get somebody else alongside them because if Celtic were to be out with him for a sustained amount of time, it could be too late. And we're just glad that we managed to manage him towards the end of the season. So I love the guy, man, right in there. Astonishingly brilliant oh. for Cameron Carter Vickers. Now, another player that we don't really need to spend any time over, I don't think, is Marco Tellio, contributed <laughs> the square root of absolutely hee haw. Tie me kangaroo down. <laughs> he is terminado. Yeah, no debates here. No, he did. They get a, a bit of a run out against Hibs yep. and a bit of a run out elsewhere. Was, 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 it, a, was it Motherwell at home or some I game? Ten or, minutes or uh, something. Was it that the terrible end? game where we were we, we drawn to? Uh, that, that's, that's right. We, we, On you go, mate. Uh, go, and, <laughs> go and save the game for his son. <laughs> and, and he, <laughs> they just threw him on just to cause confusions but who the hell is that <laughs> yeah and it worked especially right. with the fans so, <laughs> yeah look, again it's it's terminado yeah it's another one of these what's going to change things for next season do I want to spend another season trying to develop Marco Tillio and his various injuries I think he's even been injured most of the time in Australia yeah, as well yeah he's hardly played do I want to waste any more time on that or do I want to get a winger who can do all the stuff that he promised to be able to do straight away rather than spend another season talk about various loans and all that the answer is I want to just sign players now uh, I want Celtic to stop messing about with these things and sign better players stop trying to make players faster and stronger yep, and taller yep. and all that and just sign <laughs> taller I, like, you'd be as well trying to make someone taller than faster and stronger <laughs> so I and don't want and Greg Taylor eat his crust <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What was it? It was Jordan Strachan wanted players eating Weetabix and stuff like that as well. <laughs> and you go back even further than that, it, it was managers in the 80s wanted players to drink Guinness and all that <laughs> to, to fill out, get Tilly on the, on the Guinnesses. But no, I, I, I don't want to waste any more time trying to build the squad with these. There's a player in there, uh, bits and pieces we're here. We're beyond and there. that now. Yeah, absolutely. We're a winning club, we're not a project club, as Paul Lambert said. <laughs> we're beyond that now. Wait till we're the end of August. Like, come on. I know. <laughs> when, when I think of Tilly, the first thing is that Alex raving about him in the scouting thing, but I can just think of Brendan Rodgers coming in and out in his press conference talking about power, pace, yeah. quality, and then it's that David Brent, oh, oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, come on, Terminado. Easy. Uh, AJ. AJ. Alistair Johnson. Right good teammate he was in January. One of the few that got past Marts in January. Um, who did I go to last? I'll go to you first, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I can't really come up with anything particularly new to say about Alistair Johnson. I think he's an absolute ready-made, right good teammate for this part of the season. I think he really is one of the ones who really sort of big cliche and all that, but rolled the sleeves up and got yeah. on with it and dug in when it mattered. An absolute warrior out there. And towards the end of the season, that cup finally was excellent again as well. So uh, he's, he's not... He's not astonishingly brilliant because he's not one of the two or three absolute mm. standouts. He's not one of the three crown jewels as it were in there but he has contributed massively and he's, he's an absolutely solid right good teammate for me yeah I think you could make an argument for him being astonishing, astonishingly brilliant in certain games yeah, the games yeah. against Rangers particularly he absolutely oh, loves yeah. them doesn't he <laughs> so I think 
um, once we got to sort of that February onwards where we had that settled defence of him, Taylor, Carter Vickers and Scales, I think that's when Celtic became more solid and he was a massive part of that. I can't really put him into astonishingly brilliant. He's just always going to be that second bracket, uh, but that is more than enough. Next up, Nicholas Gerrit Kuhn. January signing, new players. Is this the first new player we've got to discuss? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first one, of, new, one of two. <laughs> one of two we've got to discuss. Um, telling you right now, I don't want to hear any argument about it. Oh. Right? Terminado for me. Oh, oh really? Uh, rotten. The guy's no got it. Wow. He's, he's no got it. And if you want to argue, here's my ace up the sleeve. I would say, if he was on loan, not one of you two would want to keep him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I, look, I completely get that. I think... The only thing that I, I, I'm going, willing to give them the benefit of the doubt for he came in, he was injured, the whole lost weight because of the dental work. So, But towards the end of the season when that should be gone, he contributed some games but not enough. I'm going to give him bitterly really disappointed. But uh, oh, am I? I am going to give him bitterly disappointed. Because players talk so much about pre-season, I'm willing to give him a pre-season. He had and one see in what... Austria. But then he got injured when he came to Celtic, so uh, training. So I'm willing to give him that. Mm. And I, I can understand why you're putting him in Terminado, but I just, I can't have another winger that's crap. <laughs> it, th- I've heard all your arguments. I've listened to them all and I'm not convinced by any of them. Neither am I. Uh, Neither Martin, am I. Stephen, four and a bit million quid. Comes from rapid Vienna. The guy's been at we are Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, you name it. He's been everywhere. <laughs> Brazil Ajax. 1970. Ah, he's been Brazil 1970. He's been a Lisbon lion. <laughs> he was one of the class of 94. He's seen it and done it all. But the fact is, when he came to Celtic, he put that shirt on. He contributed the square root of feck all, as far as I'm concerned. Moreover, he looked like a coward. Moreover, he came mm. into a team that needed help. And he was supposed to be the big, new, big, shiny toy. And, yeah. I, and he, he's just shown none of it. And there's a player that arrived in January at the same time who had a completely different approach, a completely different attitude, a completely different impact. And uh, Kuhn for me is just, maybe he's a pre-season. That's fine. Okay. But see when I'm sitting here this time next year, <laughs> yeah. I'll take that into account. As far as his contribution between January and now is concerned, based on price, based on quality based on where he came from based on reputation based on everything that he came with when he arrived at Celtic bottom of the class mm. I, yeah, ex- I expected more from- we've seen this in school haven't we like the brainiac <laughs> comes into class and does gets distracted by something does terrible one year and they always get punished because you expect a wee bit more out of them because you know they've got more to give bottom of the class yeah what are we really dealing with here between January and now, a couple of goals against Aberdeen. There was that equaliser. Was, Ab- Trund- was one a Trundler uh, or an OG? Kind of broke onto it. It was good work for Mida, funnily mm. enough, that, mm. that set that one up. So it's a, it's a lot of nothing, isn't it? And it feels very harsh to say Terminado about a guy who hasn't been, I don't think he's been terrible, but on the other hand, he's just not really done much of anything nah. at all. He's been, he's been disappointing at least. And... Again, don't want to get too far ahead of himself, ourselves, but there's a guy who had to come in to this team to basically rescue the season, yeah. and it was at the expense of Kuhn yeah. for the large, a large part of that. So that is a, a huge sort of blot in that copybook. If you had to lose your place at this season, when we are, you make a good point about how look, we're heading, we're in the mid season here, we're heading towards a title race, which is razor thin here. We're, mm. we're on the knife edge, Dave. They've taken a bit of a lead. We've knocked it back. We want players to kick on. We want players to turn up. And it might be very harsh to expect that of a guy who's just in the door. But what's the point in signing him yeah, if, exactly. we, if we don't expect anything He's from no him? 19, straight away? 18, no. 19. It's this perception thing again. Bernardo is on loan. Yeah. And people are like, I don't know if I'd sign him. I'd maybe sign him. I would. And, and that's fine. You're allowed your opinion about Bernardo. But if you think we should not keep Bernardo, then there's no possible way you can rate Nicholas Kuhn. Because one was four and a bit million, one will probably cost six million. It's basically the same money, but it's no mine. I don't care. But yeah, yeah. the the they're no vastly different prospects. But one guy, Bernardo's con- contributed way more than Nicholas Kuhn has, and I'm just I'm I'm not having it. And I think we need to be very careful settling for this sort of mediocrity because he's just he's a nothing player. Yeah, and, and, and I think if he had been here for a season or two and was in the same bracket as a lot of the players in the squad who haven't really done an awful lot. 
And you make a, another good point about how if he was on loan, there's no way he would even spend even a minute arguing about it. We'd just be like, nah, he's gone. Who, yeah. who really cares at the end of the day? If he'd been here for more than six months or more than four months, more than a season, we would all be just like, ah, just get rid of him. We'll get something else. But it's just that, it's that short-term nature of it that makes, Melly, you make the point about how you're not quite ready to write him off just yet. But it really is just that, isn't it? Yeah. It's nothing it's that like he's done Maritz on the pitch. Bauer level signing for me, kind of, <laughs> yeah. no, maybe not even that good. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that sort of real middle-of-the-road, bang-average footballer. That team I've, Aware or something uh, like that. Team was, Aware was better as nah, well. Probably, like, yeah. I've just seen I've just seen way too much of I've just seen way too much of it, Celtic, so now I've got, I've got no time for it. So I was bottom of the class. I go for it. Tell me, Nado. I, I, I can't really... No, I can't argue too much. This is not a lasting judgment. No, no, no. He will be here next year and we will judge him mid-season. Next five years, Jamie. The next five years because he's not one of those bumper deals. Reach out and grasp that slide whistle with all your might, Nicholas Gerrit Kuhn. Yes. <laughs> and you force us to blow that up the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next up is really unfair. It's Scott Bain. Now, we had him terminado last time, but the guy just signed a new deal. He's Celtic's second choice goalkeeper. His job there is to... I don't know. Make sure he's performing at a level that keeps Joe Hart performing at a level. It's not applicable, isn't it? It's, just, it's one of those ones where it is it literally is the subkeeper. I think the goalkeepers fall into this category where you can't really mm. judge on it. I think he probably would have gone into Terminado because he contributed absolutely nothing towards the season. But he did get on in Joe yep. Hart's last game, didn't he? So there we he go. probably has gone up. Well, so because he, he allowed us to give Joe Hart that yeah. round of applause <laughs> then will we just put him three third three <laughs> why not right there why we not? go bitterly disappointing <laughs> um, Yang Melly Terminado I, I said that we did say that at the January didn't we yeah yeah look, from the very start I was just I just don't see it with this guy maybe a bit like you with uh, Kuhn but if, I'm more harsh on him I just mm. don't see where it's going to come for him not exactly that young either is he ever going to be a Celtic player? Not for me. So, Terminado, man. Do we, have to, do we have to re rethink somewhat, Stephen, we consider a young Celtic player? And the reason I bring this up is because this sort of ebbs and flows throughout the years. You know, sometimes like a young Celtic player, we've been used to seeing players make their debut at 18 and 19, well, 18, 17 sometimes. And we think, right, right, good young player. And then, you know, we see people like in their mid-20s being called young player. And for the last couple of years, we've been going for, for goodness sake, these guys are not young. Like a 22-year-old is not young. A 23-year-old is not a young player. But the position Celtic are now is we can't find any 17 or 18-year-olds to keep them at the club long enough to make any sort of meaningful breakthrough. So we're really, our young players now, the youngest players in our squad who contribute are in their 20s kind of now, aren't they? So Yang is... In Celtic land, Yang is a young player, and well, yeah. he's spent his first season in a foreign country in a foreign league, and he's shown glimpses. He's shown. I, I, I know it sounds nuts, right? And I slaughtered Yang on the the January episode of this what he did, but for me, I'm more encouraged by Yang and his potential for improvement than anything I've seen from Kuhn. Really? Aye. Oh, oh, Even uh, though Yang's had some absolute howlers, one, he's way more entertaining than Kuhn. And that is <laughs> that's interesting to me. But his, co his overall contribution to the season, don't get me wrong, for Yang, is bottom of the class. He's, he's contributed almost nil to yep. Celtic's season this year. I think I have to agree on bottom of the class. But I, I'm, I'm interested to see what he looks like with maybe, hopefully, that first problematic season under his belt. Yeah, I think the what we said about Greg Taylor, what you pointed to with Greg Taylor is that it's, it's kind of widely a perception thing. Yeah. Uh, we've said that a, f a few times tonight as well and how you know, it, it, it comes into the Bernardo chat as well, the Odin home. This youth player project needs a run of games, there's a player in there stuff. It all just depends because as I've said a number of times and including on this podcast, some of Celtic's best players over the last decade have been teenagers. Kieran Tierney, Moussa Dembele, Odson Edwards, who else? Christopher Ayer were all outstanding as teenagers. Even early 20s guys, you've got like Je Jeremy Frimpong was a yeah. teenager as well. Ryan Christie was a, a young girl player. But we don't do that with them because they come in and basically play straight away. But if so if they don't come in and play straight away, oh no, how can you expect anything out of them? Mm. Even though they're the, they're the same age, they're basically the same thing. They're coming to the club at the same age. <laughs> it's just some players don't contribute anything and they get kept away in a glass box. No, no, you can't criticise them. Yeah. Even though what we've seen 
through Celtic's nine in a row was teenagers it, basically winning leagues for us, right? And I know you're they not were playing, so you're not that bad. Yeah, I, yeah, of course, and of course that was backed up by massive amounts of experience and the likes of your Lustigs, your Browns, mm. your Forrests, all these guys, right, were in there. But we've got that now as well. We've got Callum McGregor. We've still got James Forrest. We've got Joe Hart in there. We've got Cameron Carter-Vickers. We've got the players. We've got the framework there for teenagers and younger players to flourish if they were good enough mm. in, to, in this team. So I don't really buy the, he's too young to to judge. The only the only caveat I would apply here is that he was coming from Korea and that must be a massive adjustment, right? Yeah. But if we're grading him on the season that's just happened, there was quite a lot of rewriting of his history when it came to just when he get, when he gets sent off against Hearts, it looked as if things were going yeah. for him. It looked as if things were finally going to kick on, and he get that incredibly harsh, in my opinion, sending off a straight red against Hearts, and that the game was disastrous as a result of that. But there's been a a move to sort of suggest that I was on some run before that, and it was mm-hmm. just that really we're dealing with one game. Yeah, it was good against Dundee. He started quite well against Hearts. It was good in the Aberdeen at home, the one he scored a header in much earlier in the season. That's it. That's but, all so you're is that with. enough just to just to drag them up from the bottom of the class? Because no. in the bottom of the class, we're talking about guys who have not contributed a bean. Yeah, like three games, but Odin Holm scored against Bucky Thistle. That didn't <laughs> save him from down no, there. You're right. You are right. <laughs> just on the teenagers thing, do you think though? I mean, but the only way Celtic are going to field teenagers now is if we go out and buy other people's teenagers. Mm, yeah, because we can't seem to get our own teenagers really into the team before they're snaffled away by, you know, anyone that shows any sort of, I mean, we've got Daniel Kelly and Rocco Vata. Are, is Rocco Vata still a teenager? He must be. Yeah, yeah. he is, yeah. Um, we could barely get, the, we're struggling to get these guys tied down to new contracts and, and they're on the precipice of being in the Celtic team from time to yeah. time. So I wonder if we are going to maybe see the end of that or it really is just a case, uh, I was going to say uh, maybe a case of going to like Motherwell and Aberdeen and buying their teenagers, but we can't even do that now. They're all going to Italy and all that <laughs> sorts yeah. of stuff. So we really are out of it. So uh, is Yang Terminado bottom of the class, Melly? Yeah. Yep. It's about what I can see going forward as well. It's again a question I've posed a few times. What changes next season? Because Celtic are going to sign wingers. I think we're going to, if James Forrest is still knocking about next season after the turnaround he's had, how does Yang even mm. get into the team? So uh, it's just, it's an experiment. I don't see any value in going forward now. Never seen it coming. Never, ever seen it coming. Bare minimum, you need 20 goals as a Celtic striker to be considered not a flop. He's had more goal celebrations than he's had goals. (laughs) Brendan Rodgers doesn't want him.